This video was brought to you by Marcus Beal, Elbil Mac, a battery planner, stolen by Camp Power and Beal Componente. Yo, what's up? We are now getting ready for 1000 km challenge with the Volvo EX30. So, you know, this EX30 is supposed to be more efficient than some of the smart cars that I tried. And also, it charges slightly faster and has a little bit bigger battery than the smart hashtag 1, hashtag 3. So, uh, the hashtag 1 was the. No, sorry, the hashtag 3 was the fastest I did. Uh, in this uh, Geely group, right? And it did it in 11 hours and 10 minutes. Will the EX30 be faster? We will see, but it's gonna be a little bit wet tonight. But okay, so here you see, this is called Twin Ultra. It's all wheel drive, the perform uh, Twin Performance Ultra. Yeah, that's whatever. So we have these nice seats. Yeah, it's schnell. So I charge it to 100%. And it seems like 100% is actually 97% uh, the real stellar charge. So um, yeah, we're gonna drive the Norway route. I will do the wifey pregnant route. So I will have to stay close to yes him. I will take one south loop there initially, and then I'll stay on the north and then back and forth here. And then in case the water breaks, I can hurry back to yes home. Yeah. So we'll just do the final preparation and then off we go. All right, we are off. So now we are passing by Alnabru. Yeah, it is now almost 11 on a Saturday night, so there's still some traffic here. But um, yeah, it is dry for now, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be soaking wet. It'll be raining cats and dogs, so that will of course affect the consumption. But not much I can do. I kind of need to drive at night and on Saturday night because that's where we have no Baustelle and the lowest traffic. Yeah, I'm now I'm gonna hug the left lane because I'm a Norwegian, Nisa. <laughs> yeah, now actually there will be a split soon, yeah, so that's why. Just hug this lane. I don't want anyone else to come in front of me. We are now at turnaround point, Schweinsun, and it's supposed to be 146 something kilometer. It's 144.5, so this car under reports. I think I measure around 1.2%. So yeah, that means we have to count to 998. Okay, let me turn around here, and then we go north. We are now at the supercharger in Vesby, and uh, yeah, we are charging now. Look at that. Taking, well, how many kilowatt are we charging at? It's by niche. How many kilometers per hour are charging at? We don't know. The car doesn't tell you how fast it is charging. Well, let me see. There is another, uh, if you go here, wait, uh, here, and then you go to Lasse. Who the heck is Lasse? You go to car status. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, no, wait, wait, where the heck? Where the heck was here? Uh, no, no, it's settings. Well, in settings, you have charging. And here we see charging, but it doesn't tell me anything here either. But fortunately, we have car scanner. Yeah, so car scanner tells me that I am now taking 59 kilowatt. Initially, I took only 18 kilowatt. Yeah, so oh, oh, this is a bit annoying. See, we are lighting up. Um, so what you want to do as a courtesy to other drivers is that you go here, you go into the screen. Everything is done via the screen. And then you go to this setting and then you turn. Oh, can you see anything? It's too bright, man. It is already set to the lowest off and then you have to press OK to confirm and then you turn off that yeah okay so yeah now I need to figure out my next stop but you can see okay what was the consumption well look look, look at this this is too bright man if you go here and then you go to car no, settings and then to controls and then display brightness is already at the lowest so you cannot make it any lower than that Auto, yeah, I, I want the dark. Okay, what the what dark? No, no, it's not dark. Okay, okay, it doesn't make any sense uh, difference. So um, yeah, I need to figure out my next stop now. So we can just do this and we'll see. But okay, yeah, I want to show you. How do you see the consumption, the trip meter? Whatever. You have to go here, click here, one click, two click, car status, trip info, three clicks. 
Wow. Wow, look at that speed. We are at 31% now. Yeah, on the on the display, car's display is 31%. We're still taking 156 kilowatt. It goes like a rocket, at least until around 45%. So uh, yeah, we will probably charge to 60% and then we go for, uh, I can show you the plan. No, okay, yeah. We're gonna go for Ayontidal. Wait, we have to press start first. Oh, I almost forgot. Ah, okay, and the car is always, no, no, and this shit happens. It wants to add charging stop. No, no, I don't want to add charge. Can I, can I remove? No, I want to, okay. Um, and then you have to click here and then you have to remove charging stops. I don't want to stop there. Delete it. So this is just like Polestar. And then it says, oh, you will arrive at 8%. Uh, that's still fine. No problem. <laughs> Wait, let me see. Um, I have to maybe configure some of this stuff. No, you, there's not much you can configure. Root options, you see. You just have this. So, yeah, it, it works like Polestar if you know it. So, it is kind of clumsy, but I would say that this is optimistic. You know, no, you will not arrive at 8%. You will arrive with 0% or less. So, yeah, I did my Asian math and I know that I need... Well, I need to spend 46% of the battery. So, we need to charge more than this. Wait, what? Huh? You know, initially, I could have sworn that I saw 110 kilometer from here to Ionity, but it is actually only 89 kilometers there. Uh, uh, I don't know what happens. I based my calcul Ninja calculation based on 110 kilometers. And what I'm going to do instead is, since we already charge, well, we probably want to charge to 55-60% every time, right? So um, I will go to Circle K Minnesota instead, and that is 107 kilometers. So close enough, yeah. So... Uh, a few more minutes and then we should be good to go but i can show that now see at 51 percent we are down to 100 kilowatt so uh yeah i, I need to go to 60 percent to have that margin but i mean okay think about this 100 kilowatt is still faster than 20 kilowatt you will be getting if you go too deep and you arrive with five percent or less Oh, we're back on the road. So that was 19 minutes and 7 seconds. Hmm. And the car, well, at least the charger reported delivering 35 kilowatt hour. But then there are some losses and stuff, some cooling or whatever. So but at least average speed is around 110 kilowatts. I think that's okay. Maybe we can try to charge more efficiently and hover around 120 kilowatt average. But yeah, it's supercharger, man. Dirt cheap. 3.3 nook per kilowatt hour. It's actually cheaper than Ionity if you charge uh, roughly more than 120 kilowatt hour per month. But a few of these uh, charging sessions, then it's cheaper. But yeah, Ionity is still pretty cheap also, of course. But it also depends. Uh, Ionity, they have the same price all over the place at least in within the country but uh, supercharger it varies uh, depending on location But Minnesota, we came here with 16%. We had way too much juice, let me see. So on this leg here, no, I have to, oh man, I have to click so many times. Yeah, we consumed 254. I expected to consume 280, so um, yeah. So, but okay, there was something weird going on here because uh, normally on weekends, they don't have any roadworks, but the main bridge here is closed. And we have to drive the old road over here and then back again. So I think I will avoid here, well, normally my own rule is that you have to drive back and forth between Rudshögda and Cleavage, but because of the road construction here, I would probably only have to stay here between there and then turn around uh, uh, here. Yeah, but then they're supposed to open the main bridge at six, so in four hours. Okay, yeah, then we can revert to going the normal route again. Then, okay, but you see, because we charge way. Huh? What? I was about to say, because we arrive with more than 10%, then we will, boom, get instant fast speed. Uh, 
Apparently not. It seems to have a quite slow ramp, but regardless... Well, and then I might as well go deep, right? Oh, uh, uh, this is actually not good. Look at this. We've been charging for five minutes at 30 kilowatt. Huh? I, okay, first I thought, okay, maybe it just takes a couple of minutes before we get the maximum speed. Well, um... Wait, I think there's something wrong here. Now we are taking 69 kilowatts, but it's been eight minutes now. It should have ramped up to maximum speed. Uh, so either is something wrong with the charger, but why did we get 30 kilowatt and then it was also at 60 kilowatt? I don't know what's going on. Uh, let's uh, look at this. Okay, we were parked over there, charging. Now we are charging here. And now we get 30 kilowatt. Huh? Um, there is obviously something wrong here because I've been charging here for 22 minutes. I charged on the first slot for 10 minutes. We spent 32 minutes charging so far and we are still at 44. This goes way too slow. I don't know if there's something wrong with the charger or the car, but um, I will charge as if everything was normal, which it means to charge to 60% again. So we just have to correct for whatever happened here, right? Um, and then for some reason, this doll gives me only 32 kilowatt. For tw <laughs> Let's move, well, maybe not back to the first doll. Let's uh, try that charger then. Uh, you see, we started with 30 kilowatt and then it went up a little bit to 60 kilowatt. Now it jumped down to 50. This doesn't follow the regular limit we have with, with the Volvo or the, the Smart. So I'm starting to think that there's no problem with the car, but there might be some grid problem substation or something because uh, you know like i said on weekends they don't schedule any road works and then for some reason the main bridge over here is closed i wonder if that has anything to do with this so i think there might be some grid problems that's why it's jumping a little bit up and down and then i have experienced this before in norway but it's super rare it happened maybe some seven eight years ago with Melinda falcon at ghoul i was getting lower speed than normal and there was something with the power lines or something I don't know man so if there's a problem with the grid then we cannot blame the car so we actually have to correct for this how much time we lost versus whatever but we know that on a normal charging session we should get 110 kilowatt I moved the car twice I used one minute each time and we just know and I've written down how much we get from the charger so we just correct for this and then hopefully we don't run into this again but we have to avoid coming back to Minnesota what is that click click sound huh is something weird going on now we're still charging right just gonna go for 60% and then yeah okay so yeah, see, step, okay soon enough we can leave okay off you go again now we can test the suspension of the EX30 it seems to have nice and soft suspension, but it's a crossover anyway. But okay, so now we take the detour. I will count how long we spend here also versus distance and we calculate the average speed and we count versus if it was 110 kilometers per hour average speed. So we then apply the correction there also. There are lots of corrections here, but we will avoid this area now for the rest of the challenge. So we don't have to apply too many corrections because every time we apply correction, there will be round of errors which introduces yeah more errors so there you see there are some lights going on over there they're doing something there hmm. We are now at the supercharger in Tongan and look here. So we managed to drive, well, okay. Yeah, we managed to drive 116 kilometers we got here, but we came here with only 6% battery. So initially we took, oh, sorry. We took 18 kilowatt for maybe a minute. And now we are at 59 kilowatt and that's also gonna take about a minute. And then it should boom, go to over 100 kilowatts. So this is the more normal ramp up we have seen in the EX30, but also in the, a smart hashtag 
three and hashtag one. So it seems like there is a site problem at the Minnesund, which is obviously not the, a problem over here. We're gonna see soon about the ramp up. Yeah, so wait a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Boom, 153 kilowatt hour per hour. Yeah, so, but I already done the corrections. Uh, we, um, we have to deduct 33 minutes at Minnesund. And then there was a two minute deduction also at the detour over the Minnesund bridge. But ah, uh, all good. Okay, look, we have some ambient lights here, right? So if we go to the car icon, you can change it, but it has only some presets. It's not fully customizable, but you have different themes. They have ambience and then you can, no, that, that's the, okay, there's forest, but you can, you can change. And then it changes also the interior here. See? Oh, that is overexposed. Sorry. Um, there, yeah. But you also have sound. Okay, it takes a while, it slowly fades in. <laughs> but this is barely audible while you're driving. Nordic Twilight. And also changes here, but... Huh? And then, okay, okay. Northern Lights. Wow, oh, that's pretty awesome. Wait, is this computer generated Northern Lights or is it actually a recording or... It seems to be AI generated, but it's not a rendering, I hope. It's probably just an animation. But yeah, so this is what I prefer. You have some ambient light there and there. We are now at the Rudshögda and it's raining cats and dogs outside. I just plugged in and then I activated the charger from the app and yeah, we are with 10% and then it, it plays as 12% here. But um, you see, it, when we arrive at 10%, we get 59 kilowatt or 60 roughly instead of 18 kilowatt. So I think this is uh, the deal. You have to arrive at 10%, no more or no less than that. But because of the wet road, the consumption was freaking high. 322 watt hour per kilometer. On dry road, it was around 280 only. So, wow, that's a big impact on the range and also the consumption. Well, I'm getting sleepy now. So I set the clock to wake me up in 15 minutes. I'm gonna try to take a power nap. So as usual, I'll inflate the storm bag pillow. And then, let's see, how can we recline? Hmm, how comfortable is it to nap in the Volvo? Oh, 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 it goes quite flat, wow. All right, so then I just take, wait, where is it, here? I take the beanie, and then I use the storm bike jacket as blanket, and then cover up this, and then I enjoy the, Rain ASMR. Okay, back on the road. This time we charge at sixty-six percent. Charge slightly longer than I uh, needed, but okay. Um, also, you see that uh, after twenty minutes and thirty seconds, we got thirty-seven uh, kilowatt hours. So that becomes one hundred eight kilowatt hours. So yeah, it seems like we get consistent uh, charging speeds. We are now at the supercharger uh, in Landsporten again. So we arrived with 16% uh, this time. And boom, oh, look at that. Ah, if we arrive with more juice, then we get 150 kilowatt instantly. Uh, I'm not keen on arriving with 15% or more. Okay, but I'm um, not sure what else I'm gonna do now. I still feel a bit uh, sleepy. I didn't nap on the previous stop, so let's try to nap now. Oh, uh, oh, 
the heck happened here? This car is so comfy. Or I'm really tired. Yeah, one of those things. But I counted that. I started napping at 6.20. It's seven for so we count as one and a half hour nap. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we lost one percent battery during the time. So, so it pulls with screen and stuff. It pulls very little power for heating the cabin. Okay, anyway, off we go. We are back at the supercharger in Tongen. Yeah, I, this is nice because it's cheap here. And we just happened to arrive with 19%. There was no other option because, well, actually kind of, because I mean, let, me, let me explain. The other possible stop would be at Espa, Bolelon, but uh, it's not that far away. And we will arrive there with maybe 17%, but Espa has only 150 kilowatts but it's the old chem power so i suspect i might only get around 120 kilowatt over there that's not going to cut it and then the next possible option again is circuit minison uh, okay so whatever but at least we get 155 kilowatt boom instantly so this means that for the remaining challenge we don't have to drive that far we don't have to charge that far i think we only need to charge to around 50 ish percent yeah, at least 55, some 50, 55% maybe. Yeah, so, um, and then remember that we have to go to 988 kilometers here. I am home. We are now at Ionity Dal. Oh. <laughs> Finally, we end up here. We had to go on the loop on the north there because we had to avoid the closed bridge. But okay, so yes, we are now charging and we came with 11%. So usually what happens when you arrive with 11% is that you get 60 kilowatt. <laughs> Let's see how long before we get 150 kilowatt then. So this is the first car for the year that I use summer tires on the press car. So you see we have good year. Uh, Efficiency grip, performance, SUV. Yeah, 245, 40, 20. So this could be the reason why the car sounds a bit noisy compared to all the other cars with winter tires we tried. But um, yeah, and you see that it's quite a compact car. Actually, it seems like it might be a model, no, an ID3 rival, but also a model three rival. They have roughly the same space. So, I mean, they call it SUV, but it's quite small. <laughs> there, boom, three minutes. We are now at maximum speed. Oh, yeah. We are back on the road. That was only 15 minute charging stops. Yeah, so that's how it should be. So that means you have to charge only 55%. Yeah, we are now at 55 and the battery is at 44 degrees Celsius or 40, yeah. Okay, but next stop is going to be Rutsogda. That is uh, 91 kilometers from here, or at least from Dahl. And the car estimate will arrive with 29%. Uh, I don't think so. We should arrive with 10 to 12%. So let's see then who is right here. The machine or the ninja. Oh yeah, we're now at the superchargers and then we arrive at 7% and now we get 18.8 kilowatt. Up, not the end, yeah. <laughs> Shit. So uh, yeah, 7%, I expected 10, but then the consumption was a lot higher than expected. Actually, this will automatically reset after a couple of minutes we are charging now, so that's a bit silly. It should reset once we pull out or start driving again. Okay, so that means that, you know, we need to charge a little bit more and then this is going to be the last charging stop and then we need a nine somewhere north of uh garden one then yeah almost done then and then we're about to hit the 10 hour mark <gasps> is this going to be faster than the smart hashtag three or not all right this is the final run so now we have to drive another 90 something kilometers before we nine but if you look at the time 11 now we are already at 
10 hours and 21 minutes and we still have to drive some distance so are we gonna beat the Brabus or not uh, right now I'm not sure uh, I fucked up because we were supposed to count down to 988 uh, eight, and we already at 991 and you see it we are at 11 uh, so we we actually hit the 1000 kilometer mark at 11 hours <laughs> it's, oh no we didn't do the countdown no it's like we did all the action and then you didn't come oh no uh, okay whatever you just pull out we pull out too early ah oh, shit okay whatever let's just go home okay we're back home and uh, it's a freaking storm outside right now <laughs> but yeah so the Volvo actually did it 10 minutes faster than the Brabus huh well, that makes sense because we have a little bit bigger battery and then even though the charging curve might be quite similar because the battery is bigger then it means that every charging stop you charge a little bit faster than the Brabus and then it did which it seems that the Volvo is also more efficient but it has summer tires and then uh, it wasn't that cold on this run so yeah everything makes sense but it also means that the corrections we made should also be correct even though we had some actually over two minutes, like two hours of correction, it seems like everything has been calculated and corrected correctly. Okay, but that means that if you want the fastest traveling time between these cars, you have to go for the Volvo. And then if you want to uh, get fake engines down, then you can get the Brabus. <laughs> but overall though, I'm uh, quite excited, I mean, quite impressed of how well the car drives. I just minus about the noise levels and also the software seems a bit buggy in many ways and some annoyances here and there but um, it depends I mean there are situations where I would actually choose this Volvo over some of the other cars but it all depends but anyway I think that's gonna be it for now hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later